Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're gonna to do a tonalist watercolor landscape painting. I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. I started saturating it with water before I started the video, adding a little bit more now. It is 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press, and it is 11 by 15. As it soaks up water, it'll start to buckle, and you could simply just push the paper down, push down the binder clip, and that'll help stretch it out. I used the back of the brush due to um, oils on the hands that could cause um, areas of resistance. I'll name the colors as I go along. It's gonna be a made up landscape but I think this one's gonna be focused on sky and kind of a beach scene. So we'll go right into that. I'm gonna use raw sienna to map things out. I do wanna uh, say with the last video, we reached 6,000 subscribers, so that's really cool. Um, those numbers always fluctuate Chances are, whenever I upload this, some people unsubscribe and some people will subscribe. And it's a back and forth kind of numbers game. But I am super excited about that 6,000. I thought it was going to take a lot longer to get to 6,000, so I'm really excited about that. So thank you all so much. Here will be like kind of the white of the paper. And I'll focus above and below where I want a reflection to be. My paper is buckling some, so I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit more. And I'm gonna play around with some colors in the sky. So that was raw sienna. Here is my light red oxide. And the goal is to get a glow. I believe a combination of light red oxide and the raw sienna and then passing Payne's gray on top gives a glowing effect. Let's see if we can achieve that here. Let's just cut right through that. bring some down as a reflection on the water. All right, let's see. I'm also gonna grab some alizarin crimson. That blends well with these two colors in the sky. This is the uh, synthetic, this is the U. Original alizarin crimson, I believe, had light fastness issues. Oh, Percy Pooh, you can't just jump up on... I think she has paint on her paw. Now it's on my pants. That's okay. Percy, you can't just jump up onto a painting. <laughs> These cats are the best. Okay. So I'm going to grab some Payne's Gray. I seem to have used up all of it on the palette. What I've been using lately is the Cotman brand. Brand-wise, I fluctuate between Van Gogh, Cotman, and Da Vinci. They all seem to be well-priced, good quantities, to the point where you're not too um, reluctant to really lay the paint on there. I do have some tubes of uh, Daniel Smith, but there has been a reluctance there just because of the, um, just the cost per tube. Now, as we get closer to the horizon, the clouds will be thinner and more distant. A little bit 
bit bigger. I do feel like it's a little bit of a mismatch. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm gonna use it partly. Let's try to tie everything together. So there's my horizon line. And I said we'd go kind of a beach water scene. So let's pull that hook shape around. I've seen this shape a lot in um, Stuart Davies, not, not sorry, Stuart Davies, I'm sorry, David Usher and uh, Stephen Cronin. It's where you have the beach or the landmass come really close in front of you. And then as it recedes, then goes into that distant. All right, so this is my raw sienna. I'm gonna kind of really glob it on as we get closer. And I have a paper towel in this hand to see if there's anything I wanna play around with in the sky. Go for a little bit more wispier effects and pull out some more highlights and whites before it dries. Even though I'm doing a stamping motion, I'm trying to rotate the paper towel in my hand so that it doesn't repeat. So have fun and experiment with that. use the push paint around. All right, I'm gonna grab some burnt sienna. Now, everything on the palette is dry, so I have to scrub at it. By the way, this hake brush is quite old and it's been through a lot. And I think putting it through a lot, such as scrubbing in that fashion, just to pull that pigment up, really helps um, age and wear in and give character to the brush and the brush strokes. I'm also going to take the paper towel now and pull it out straight to pull out some highlights. Let me pull out the brush down so you can see. Straight line. There we go. Try to get a little bit more glow. Pull out just textures. So I did mention that the channel hit the 600th, sorry, 6,000th subscriber. So that's really cool. Um, over 600 videos now. Today is Wednesday. I wanted to mention that uh, spring break, Easter break, Passover, all that stuff is coming up. So tomorrow is my last day of work before break. And hopefully I'll be able to get a whole bunch of different painting videos in. Felt like there's been a little bit of a delay lately just kind of everything leading up to that. This is just adding some texture with the um, Payne's Gray. Pulling around back there for that landmass. For me, the distant landmass is always a slight struggle because um, I want to put it in now but it's the wet and wet soft phase, which gives a nice distant softness to it. But yeah, Hammy, a nice distant soft painting, right? And, um, but some of the edges bleed a little bit too much into the sky. Let's 
grab a little bit of Payne's Gray, try to darken that inside edge of this hill. And grab Payne's Gray and use the edge, Hammy. <laughs> Cats are just going crazy today. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Let's see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the card for scraping. And I'm gonna use the sharp edge. And the reason I'm using a sharp edge and the card is to just get my dark lines. In the wet and wet phase, it'll backfill. And now I'm gonna pause and we'll do a dry off and see how everything looks. All right, so we did a dry off and it softened some. Uh, it's pretty dry. Some areas feel a little damp. This line of clouds, it's dark tonal value. It kind of throws things a little bit off for me. Um, it might be something that you enjoy, but since we're here and we have that happening, Let's experiment with taking some Payne's Gray, our kind of dirty mix, and putting a larger dark cloud in. I'm gonna use the paper towel to smear that around. So my goal is to get a larger, darker, tonally, uh, tonal cloud to help create a sense of depth. Just letting it move around and softening it and putting texture in it. I always have, um, if I try to go into the clouds after the initial wet and wet, I always do have some issues with the fast and loose. So it's a good way to experiment and see what happens. I'll leave it like that. All right, let's move to the foreground and get that to pop forward and add some tonal variety. I'm just using the hake to create texture, just kind of dry brushing, stippling over it. You can play around with the side of a uh, rigger brush, um, band brush, Sideswipe with a mop or a quill. A whole bunch of different things you can do. Do I want to keep this one just hake painting? I'm debating grabbing another brush and uh, playing around. I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. Warm that foreground up a little bit. I'm just standing up now. Um, usually I'm sitting and I'm painting flat, but I'm just standing up just to put a little bit more distance between me and the painting. 
kind of look at the overall image while I play around and see where I want to go with it. It's weird. With painting, for me, it's a lot of in-the-moment decisions. I think that's the good thing about the fast and loose painting is it has the end of the moment decisions, um, but you get to paint so often that you can make a whole bunch of different decisions and always play around. That would be fun. Let's wash the brush off the hake. We'll grab some uh, alizarin crimson. We'll just put a stroke of that through the sky. Kind of just get very uh, Turner esque. Bring the feel of that color down into the foreground. Let's do a dry off. All right, so we're pretty dry, and I figured we would try one last little experiment. I'm gonna grab this scraping tool. I'm gonna see if I could pull up pigment on it like a palette knife. And just do the mass for a ship. And see if I could put a ship in there. The reason I'm kind of challenging myself with this is that I kind of want to be able to say this one is just hake brush, paper towel, and scraping tool. And shape a little sail. Reflection of the boat. So this is just pulling up wet paint. And there we go. Actually, we could do a whole series of these. We could play around and put some depth in there. Or do I want the lone boat? Let's do that and let's see if we can scrape in some birds. There we go. Just laying it in like that. It's fun just giving yourself little challenges. All right. Let's sign it and then I'll sign off. Um, so that being said, Thank you for watching. You are more than welcome to follow along. You are more than welcome to sign your own name to anything you do when you follow along with any of my videos. And you have my express permission to sell anything you do whenever you follow along with one of my videos. I want you all to be successful and have fun and have money for art supplies. That being said, if you want to support this channel, liking and subscribing really helps out. And I also have ways for you to donate. I have the Etsy, I have the Patreon, and I have the uh, YouTube membership. I also have exclusive content for people that sign up for that. So, once again, thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll be back soon. Bye.